Right, good day to you all. Um, unfortunately, we're still in the engine room. Still got to do some more structural work. But we promise soon we'll be going outside to do like the beam shelf and the deck and all that sort of stuff. But we need to um, keep cracking on in the engine room to make it strong, don't we? Right, so let's get to it. So I think first, today on the agenda, is we're gonna, we've already laminated the web frame to go here. The knee's all ready, so, but before we do that, there's a stringer, a well, scarf and a stringer anyway, which is very poorly, so I think we'll start looking at that, and then the web frame can then go over the top of that. So this here is an original join in the stringer, which basically, they go, stringers go right through the boat, so obviously they don't do a piece long enough, so they have to join it. So you can see the bolts here. So then it all just gets pinched together. But what, what I think we're going to do, we're going to put a scarf on it here, and then a scarf down here, and then we'll let a piece in. And then our web frame can then go all the way up there and all the way down there. Wasn't gonna last very much longer, was it? It's plot of museum. <laughs> museum piece. Yeah. Museum of the firewood that got away. <laughs> so I'm just getting all the heads off the copper nails. I'm working on getting this rubbish frame done. But the issue, so I've got an issue with these nails here because the exhaust is there so usually when we'll hit the nails out to put the new ones in um, we can't because the exhaust is in the way so we're going to have to think about what we're going to do there so there's going to be no fixings basically but what we can do is put a fixing screw actually into the planks so it's not structurally the best but I say in the future we're going to be putting bolts right through the exhaust through some of the um, the frames anyway. So, so we're just going to cut these off yeah, flush they're then. Yeah, because yeah. we can't. No. We well, could knock them out, run the engines, and they'd spit them out the end. They don't go right into the exhaust. I don't think they've got a piece of metal between. Oh uh, yeah. So, but technically, with you cutting them off, the nail is still actually there. So because it's a double diagonal, that stuff in the plank is doing that, but not really doing that. If that makes sense. Oh, it's all good. It's fine. There's about four million other nails <laughs> together, so. Robbery job. Oh, oh, is this the crap punch? Yeah. Hold on a minute. I'm hitting nails out below the waterline, no, and you are right there. You are right there. The we've got a big. Well, the water's coming in, isn't it? Water's okay, so I won't tap them out all the way then. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be sat here for hours with my fingers over the hole. <laughs> Stupid punch. Maybe one day we should take this back and weld it on. Right then, so um, we've cut the two scarves, we removed the original scarf joint, and now we need to put a piece in. And uh, what I'd usually do is measure it and sort of like try and get exact. Um, but I'm going to take a tip from Gemma. She's actually behind the camera, so she's probably quite pleased with this. So, what we're going to do, we're going to clamp a piece up. New boot of material. And just knock it my way a bit, don't would you? 
So, you focus on the camera lady, okay? <laughs> I want to work. <laughs> right, so we've done the scarf, we've moved the old scarf showing. We've now got our new piece of oak all clamped up in position. So, we're going to take a leaf out of Gemma's book here, because I'd normally measure from point to point and then get my bevel out and then mark it. It's quite a big wall, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but by doing it like this, what we can basically do is go right there's there's the end of our scarf there so we can go right we want to that's our vanishing point this end and now we can then go there's the end of our scarf here and there's that so all we've got to do is link that to that so i'm just going to draw like a little line there so on the bench i'll link that to that and that's going to go in and then the same this end and it'll fit Perfectly. Yeah, there's no tape measures, nothing. Keep it simple. Yeah, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Is that the right word? Yep. Oh, hang on, I've almost made an error there. See, I should have marked the top. So now I'm just going to put a little line there so I can remember that's the angle that's going to go from there to there. Just put like that out on it so you don't get it the wrong way when you fit it. Okay. I always write out on stuff, don't I? <laughs> so what I've done here, what I've done here is clamped up two pieces of frame material because I always struggle, I really really struggle to cut these these long scarves because it's like 50 mil deep, you're going through oak, you're going Right up the grain, is it called ripping? I don't know. Um, so th there's a lot of elements. So I always kind of struggle to keep the saw because it's sort of a very narrow edge here. So I've put like a, I've clamped another piece of frame next to it. So that should hopefully keep my my level this way and this way um, a bit more trim. Um, just takes one element out of the struggle of the cut. So I'm gonna try that today. That was easier, a lot easier. Maybe the issue is, is me actually turning the saw a bit. So you know it was our anniversary the other day? Yeah, did I forget that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not on doing that. I got you a present. Okay. I've got you one as well, I've got a wood. What is it? Well played, my man. <laughs> so this is something, because when we got married, um, we paid £19.50 for Simon's wedding ring. Yeah, because I didn't think it would last that long, to be honest with you. I know, it's really <laughs> proud, it? but he never wears it. So, no. I got you this, because this sort of symbolises both of us. Was it? Yeah, go on, open it. I'm scared now. There's a ring. So this ring from Gentle Bands, it's okay. made from dinosaur bones, meteorites. Okay, that's pretty cool. And titanium. Oh, it's actually really cool. It's, it's actually um, inscribed. So there is no excuse now for forgetting or the date of our wedding anniversary. Oh, did you get the right? Did you measure me old one or something? <laughs> yeah. <Hey. laughs> Look at that. That's pretty cool, aren't it? Yeah. It's got meteorites and dinosaur bones. Do you think any dinosaurs were harmed in the making of this ring, though? <laughs> <laughs> so the dinosaur bones in it actually come from uh, museums. So the bits of dinosaur bones that yeah. are actually too small to like, exhibit or anything at the museum. That's mint. They go into these. That's an actual dinosaur on my ring, on my finger. Yeah. Whoa. It <laughs> Not a real I don't know, you like know it. what the name of the T Rex was or anything. Yeah. What his last um, meal was. But Gentle Vans do absolutely loads of different rings that are all dead unique and you know because you know, sometimes rings can be a bit boring, can't they? That's wicked. Yeah, but it's like Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, So it come from outer space and it was a dinosaur. Well, it come from a long time ago and outer space. Cool. Yeah. But That's you know. Cool. Thank you very much. Mm.
Mm -hmm. That's very, very thoughtful. So if you're looking for a ring for your loved one or a gift for someone that's a bit unique, visit Gentle Bands. And if you use the code Chip Happens, you get 25% off. 25%. It's not bad, is it? Not bad. I'll drop a link in the description. Okay. I was going to try and say something funny then, like, I think you can get them in one year, two year, or three year. <laughs> depends. depends how long you want to be married for. <laughs> Next time I'm just going to buy you a ball and chain. Yeah, no, I've got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> right, back to work. So I've just had a little hoover up because in a minute we're going to do this web frame and obviously we're going to have to lift the floor and get the scarf so before we do that let's get this glued up right so glue your boat up time glue your boat up okay so as per usual we would give it a quick heat with the blowtorch what does that do expands all the air molecules and air inside the wood then when we put our wet epoxy onto it then that sucks it into the wood and then gives a better bond that's my theory that's what we're sticking with <laughs> obviously you need to bear in mind it's a wooden boat Imagine quite a few people will be a bit twitchy about heating a wooden boat with a blowtorch, but if you've ever tried to light a fire, you know how difficult it is. <laughs> so, any idea is not to really burn it, but sometimes. Yeah, they're darting with the wood. So now we had our thickener. Basically bulks the, the glue up and then if there's any voids then it sort of takes up the voids. Yeah, I've got my glamorous assistant. I'll have... What did you do? Two pumps or three? Three. I'll have, I'll have two, two scoops, please. A clobber. Spilt it. God, you realise I'm... Put it back. It's not cheap, that. No, I didn't spill it. Very <laughs> <laughs> clumsy today, aren't I? I was having a conversation with Gemma upstairs. We was emptying the hoover, as you do, all the behind the scenes stuff. Basically saying, how about in the boat we have like a plumbed system which is like loads of like tubes going everywhere and then you have a big central like vacuum cleaner you know like a big dust extract in a workshop but like a super sucker and then you could just like open open the cap and then put your put your hose into it in different locations around the boat seems like a lot of effort just for the sake of going and picking up the hoover and moving yeah, but you're it. obsessed with hoovering <laughs> So which bit are you like addicted to? Is it the actual, the actual getting the hoover out and stuff? Or no. Just imagine the suction you could have. Big industrial sort of. Yeah, but to be able to like suck throughout the whole boat, yeah. you need some power. You wouldn't. Fucking travels. It doesn't lose sort of. Anyway. It'd be good in the house. Exactly. You could sell it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine all the women like, I'd be like, oh my god, I wonder if the house completely remodeled. <laughs> or like, on new builds, you go, oh yeah, this is a pipe, vacuum pipe. Oozy. 
it's gone. That's the first time I've used it. Well, the first time I used these come in a pair. The first time I used the other one, I snapped it. We're really lacking on clamps, aren't we? Yeah, I think, like, look at that. It's got a big hole and everything. It's a couple of weeks, it's went. Yeah. yeah, but we we use them, so there's no point buying expensive ones. You get full of glue and stuff. And it lasts a longer, though. We don't clean them. We just need to buy any clamps because we're really. Yeah. Them. Right, right. That's, that's good. Why just do the other one now? Yeah, what's up, places? I'll do some cleaning. Or you do some scrubbing. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> put, no, no, seriously, just put tape over it. I can't. It's my OCD. Me no, because I know I, your feet. It sucks but, in. You know, like all this. Oh, yeah, you clean up. Yeah. Thanks. You're most welcome. Right, pass me this. Right, so now we've done the stringer, uh, now we can now move on to the web frame. Luckily, we've already made this web frame, we've already laminated it. So if we laminate it when the sole was up, uh, we clamped it up. So now we need to lift this floor, the sole. Um, and now we actually know already that there's no ballast under here, because we've already removed it, haven't we? I think there might be some more dirt then. Oh, Gemma! So... Yeah, so it connects to this. So now we need to sort of start figuring out and learning how we can then rejoin, cut it down there. So let's go and dig, let's go and dig out the one we made earlier. Whoa, Ooh. nearly had ya. Um. Crazy. That's the right way, dear. Yeah, the big bend's at the bottom. The big bend tusk. Cool, so it does fit. So they must actually still try and straighten themselves out a bit. Because that was like glued clamps, but it's been left a couple of weeks. Right, so we now know, we now know that this fits the shape of the hole. Now we need to start assessing the web frame as it goes below the the sole level, and then um, start putting the scarf on that, then we can match it to the web frame, and then we can fasten it. Easy. Yes, but we need to get rid of that cross brace. Um, I prefer not to mess with it too much, but yes, we might, there's a piece of wood that runs under it here, so we can ditch that for now because we can change that, it'll be nice to change. And then we can see where we're going to join it. Around there -ish. So that's a metal floor with wood underneath it. So we're going to try and just get the wood out, aren't we? Correct! So, obviously because filming, I'm going to work in this angle, okay? So, there's no point even trying to put a spanner on it, personally. There's basically a knot on a bolt right through, so I'm just going to cut the knot off and then we'll try and knock the wood off or try and unscrew the screw, I don't know. It's not worth messing with the... Um... I hope she doesn't wave that bit. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't much grinding just done properly, dear. Welcome back to Fun with Grinders. <laughs> there we go, there we go, there we go.
So a lot of people now will be having a heart attack about yeah. the amount of sparks on a wooden boat. Yeah. I've just been using a blowtorch a minute ago. Hmm. Come, um, come back next week, see if the boat's still there. Yeah. Oh, he's doing it. That was due for its um, service anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, that wouldn't pass an MOT, would it? No. <laughs> okay, okay. So we don't need to take the floor out, do we? No, I don't think it's really worth messing with, and no. Right, okay, but one to be aware of, you've got two bolts this side going into the knee. Yeah, well, we can probably change those if we need to. Yeah, there's more bolts here and there. Yeah. So how about we just take the one bolt out and then we put our joint like here or something? Yep. Yeah. So on a serious note about like sparks and grinding and stuff like that on, on the boat, when one of us is doing it, there's always the other one is on fire watch. So we are very aware of the dangers of sparks and what rotten wood and stuff like that. So. It's all pissed wet for us. It is all pissed wet. It? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't like it wasn't burn if you put it on a fire. <laughs> Never mind the spark. And considering that fixing's been in there for not far for 80 years, it's quite good, isn't it? Hey, I believe you're a screw loose. <laughs> yeah, screw loose and it's been cut. Right then. It's good that though, isn't it? Look, hmm. they, used, they used proper, proper shit, didn't they? The boys back in the day. I mean, that's all they had available, yeah. but it was good stuff. Yeah. Nowadays, you can buy like high end or cheap. Everyone just buys cheap and throw it away, don't they? After like 20 years. Would well, yeah. you think like most modern fiberglass production boats now? Do you think they'd last 80 years? Yeah, because it's fiberglass. All the all the core and stuff like that won't. All that'll be gone. But so so yeah, as a whole and the boat. We're just going to be left with a piece of fiberglass, aren't we? Yeah. With nothing inside it. Like. That you can't get rid of easily. Yeah. So wooden boats are good So we're trying to make pirates. up excuses why wooden boats rock. <laughs> they are awesome. They are awesome. So to make my life slightly easier, I've removed the box from around the, um, the stabiliser. Won't go too much into it, but we actually did like a YouTube short on the stabiliser at, some, at one point, so... If you're interested, you can go back and we'll do a bit of an explanation. How to fit the web frame? Should you fit in the packer? I'm going to glue the actual packet instead of the wood to make it my life easier where I am. And then my glamorous assistant. Glue the bottom of it as well. No matter what I do, I always put my fingers in glue. <laughs> if 
try not to fall in the bilge. Hugging an exhaust. So that pack air looks very small and like it's not long enough, but it's actually because there's no deck beam there. Beam shelf. Beam shelf. But it's actually because there's no beam shelf there. So one day there will be. Okay. Alright, so the web frame's in now. Uh, there's only with temporary screws until we go outside and put the big fixings all the way through from the outside. But while the sole's up at the moment, we've removed that piece of wood this morning, didn't we? So let's replace. Put a piece of timber. Let's put a piece of timber in here that goes all the way across and then pushes a bit of load into the hole there from here. And I think the actual sole gets screwed to this piece of timber. So. So the piece of timber gets screwed to this floor and then the sole gets screwed to the timber, so let's see if we can replace it. So we've got this piece of timber here. I think it was a bit of a, it wasn't quite wide enough to make frames out of, but I brought it over anyway, so it's like 65 by, yeah, it's like 39, so it's a bit under frame material, especially when we've been playing, but it's perfect for them because it's got the width. So we're going to do like an oval cut now and then we'll put it in next to it and then we'll mark the angle. So this is now over big, so we'll cut it just big enough and now Gemma can just draw a nice pretty little line on it there. Make the world's way sharpie. Okay, it's got glue on it. I think you should have cleaned it off, wouldn't you? Yeah. Alright, so Gemma's now painted our little floor piece in me... Voodry Danga has, um... The bumbling sailor would call it. So we've got to wait for that to dry and I'm going to get some different fixings as well to fix it. So what we're going to do now is put the floor back in and then we're going to continue destroying frames. Because that's what we're good at, aren't we? It's perfect! That's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't think about that, did we? Okay, ratchet. Yeah. There we go. So now that. Alright, so now let's put our big bolt all the way through now. So we'll go through this one because obviously this one here will eventually go through the beam shelf. 
So as Gemma pointed out earlier, we've got a nice space there for the beam shelf. So when the new beam shelf comes in, we'll have to cut all the ends of the beams back to actually slip it in from the top. And I'm hoping to do that soon. Soon, it's going to be exciting to actually get outside and do some proper work or different work, anyway. Yeah, just need the weather to get a bit better, don't we? Yeah. I hate it. I hate sailing. I hate being on the boat. I've made a terrible mistake. I hate it. Have you been watching the Bumble and Sailor on YouTube? Terry is absolutely hilarious. So total novice, never sailed before, ever bought a Contessa 26 sailboat um, with no skill. Like us, you know, we got no skill either. <laughs> um, he's so funny. And at the moment he is down the south coast and he's trying to get the boat back to Fleetwood first time he's ever sailed and um, so every day he's put a little update on YouTube to let us all know that he's not dead yet which is great um, and I'm, I'm loving following along so if you haven't already done so go and give Terry a follow on the Bumbling Sailor channel and um, he's just hilarious he's he, he makes me laugh so much and I enjoy watching programs that make you laugh because the world's so miserable, isn't it? So we need more people like Terry who get off their arses and go and do stuff, even that's not in their comfort zone. So well done, Terry. And I hope when he passes our way, I'd love to have our little boat ready um, in time so we can actually go out and see him. Or if not, we'll get we'll get the little tender out or something and try and whiz out to the channel because I'd love to meet him. He's, he's just an awesome fella. So good luck on your journey, Terry. We are rooting for you.